During class hours, the young teacher Ida Sensei explains to his students that a certain unsolved case has excited public interest and asks how they should understand the term case. He specifically asks Ms. Sakurai this question, but when she tries to stand up to answer, for some reason, she is unable to do so. Some students begin to tease her for being unable to answer despite being a nerd. But Sakurai knows it. The only problem is that she is unable to get up due to her butt being glued to the chair. To avoid embarrassment, she doesn't explain. After the class is over, all the students surround Ada, whom they nicknamed Lovelin, and ask him to hang out with them. He refuses since he is their head teacher. Meanwhile, Sakurai is watching from her chair until her friend comes to her, asking what's wrong. The latter nervously tries to avoid her noticing until Aida approaches her, asking why she didn't answer since the question was easy for her. Sakurai's friend states that she got pranked again. Moments later, Ada is seen rushing through the school hallways while carrying a glued Sakurai on his shoulders and asking who did such a heinous prank. The students start laughing at Sakurai, but Aida shouts at them to shut up. Although embarrassed, she thinks to herself that this moment isn't so bad as she holds on to her world history book and states that Aida is her greatest historical figure. We then jump back in time to Sakurai's home, where her mother, who used to be distant from her, put on her makeup and left the house to be with another man, only coming back to drop a small amount of money for her daughter to pay the bills. Suddenly, Sakurai hears the bell ring and is surprised to see Aida at her door asking to talk. After she explains her story to him, he begins to cry profusely and promises her that she will never be alone again. The two form a strong bond after that, with Sakurai remarking that Aida was like a saviour to her. Back in the present, the nurse state that the glue is stuck to her panties, but luckily she will not be harmed by this prank and should just change her clothes for now, while on the other side, Ada begins to cry for the horrible things that usually occur to Sakurai and ask the students who is the culprit. Although he doesn't want to suspect them, but knowing his students, it has to be one of them to which they all deny. Ada then try to reason with them, telling them that what they did was bad, but not being honest is much worse. And when the students disrespect him, he asks them to face their heads down with the culprit raising his hand. But again, nobody does that. Thus, Ada gives up on them and head out, deciding that they will do self-study for the day. Later that day, while Sakurai is working as a waitress, she is harassed by her classmates because of the dish, and she has to apologize feeling down, until Aida pulls up on the restaurant drive through and glares at her, him too feeling bad for her and causing a slight traffic that catches Sakurai's attention, who is cheered up by him and promised that she will do her best since he is always by her side. Moment later, we jump into the alley, where Aida Sensei, with a cold expression, reach for his pockets and pulls out a used instant glue, throwing it in the trash aside and jumping to his bed thinking about the first moment he met Sakurai and saw her smile. That was the exact moment where he fell in love with his student Sakurai. One and a half am in the morning of that fateful day, and as Sakurai is sleeping deeply, thanks to the chamomile tea that Aida advised her to drink to get a comfortable sleep and escape her reality, she dreams about how he always is by her side, and that whatever happens doesn't matter since she will not be alone. But unbeknownst to her, Sakurai is in reality not alone, as right beneath her lays Aida eerily without her notice, as it turns out. He wasn't in his own bed before, but rather on hers, and he purposely drugged her tea to knock her out in deep sleep. A naked Aida then crawls out from beneath the bed with his eyes fixated on Sakurai, before he gets on top of her, stating that he wants to be her only hero and that he will show up whenever she's in trouble, which is why he will deliberately cause her trouble, prank her and all so he can be there for the rescue. Since seeing her smile is what matters to him, Aida then pulls the fainted Sakurai shirt up with a creepy smile, remarking that the questions Sakurai knew today, in class but couldn't answer due to embarrassment, will be in the final test. Soon after, Aida comfortably gets ready and leaves Sakurai's home, remembering to lock the door behind to avoid any suspicions. And the next morning, as all the students get to school, Sakurai's friend notices her to be in a dreamy-like state, and is somewhat intrigued when the latter explained the chamomile tea situation that Aida suggested, just as he pulls in with his mini-truck being surrounded by all the other students, to which Sakurai imagined him to be like a historical figure again. 
During lunchtime, Ada Sensei waters down some blooming flowers, again surrounded by his female students who show interest in him. But he on the other side sees them as nothing but processed food with their heavy makeup and the way they act, and state that only those who are insecure have to eat whatever they see. He, however, is looking for natural ingredients to which he sees in the form of his favorite student Sakurai and assures that he will not set any trap for her today. That night, after Sakurai and her friend Mariuma finish their shift, the two converse about how the pranks have slowed down lately and wonders if they will ever stop and who the culprit might be. Sakurai goes through her phone and reads Ada's text which state that she should call him if she need anything, and turns to Mariuma with a relieved smile telling her not to worry because she has Sensei by her side. And while this is happening, Aida creepily responds that she is right and he will be by her side, as it turns out that he has been eavesdropping their conversation this whole time as he is doing something with the plants from earlier. Not only that, but he also has his laptop aside showing Sakurai's exact location and has somehow hacked her phone and got access to her camera stating that he has been always watching her and that the preparations are ready and that he is looking forward to the next day. We then jumps to the library where Sakurai is having her lunch and the head librarian asks for her help sorting some books out, which she happily agrees to. He also asks her to stop calling her head librarian and address him by his name Yahagi as they know each other and it's more convenient. All this happening, of course, while Aida, as usual, has her phone tapped and is listening to everything she say with a cold look in his face. He is suddenly jumped when Ushijima Sensei approach him calling him Lovelin, since the student have affected him as well, and takes a seat by the window which bothers Aida since he is blocking his view. Ushijima then noticed the earpod on Aida and wonders, what is it for, and could it be that he is listening to music? But once again, Aida is just thinking about how to make him shut up and move along since he can't hear what Sakurai is saying, as this is an important day for him, revealing that he set a special trap for her. Back in the library, Sakurai finds few random books and asks Yahagi where she should put them, and the latter responds in the highest shelf deep within the library, although the books don't appear to be borrowed, so someone must have stolen them, then got them back. Aida, meanwhile, is blankly staring at Ushijima and how he just refused to go away and is about to mess up his great plan by blocking the view of the library's window. Aida states that he has no time and has to move to get to class, and Ushijima understandably agreeing that Aida is always busy keeping the peace in his class, causing the latter to misspeak and state that he is doing it all for love. Just then, a student bursts into the room calling for Aida and that they have a big problem grabbing into her teacher while running with him throughout the hallways, being noticed by the nurse who watched the whole scene unfold as she was having a smoke. The girl shouts that something big happened in the library and Ada tries to hide his excitement, wondering what is it and trying to play ignorant, but he already knew that the students would all rally up like this and make his way straight to the innermost bookshelf as the Loveland show is about to begin. Aida's plan was already laid out from the start, where he placed the dirty plant pot perfectly over the shelf, and with a thin string attached to the books, it was bound to fall down on whoever placed the books in which was going to be none other than his student Sakurai. But much to his dismay, Aida enters to see that somehow the plant pot fell down on a Yahagi instead, as he sit there miserably drenched by the stinky and dirty mud. Aida wonders who the hell is this brat? And how did he end up in here? And as all the other students begin to surround them, Ushijima advised that they should take him to the bathroom, but Aida Sensei doesn't even want to come close to this student until Sakurai calls for him with tears in her eyes. Moments later, he is seen rushing through the school hall while carrying the dirty Yahagi and cursing since his great plan came crashing down. When Yahagi apologies for bothering him, Aida brushes him off since according to him, he doesn't give a fuck about this student and that it was a perfect plan to get Sakurai dirty just so that she would get out from the showers to his arms. But now, and thanks to Ushijima blocking his view earlier, Aida is stuck with Yahagi much to his annoyance. As the school hours comes to an end, Sakurai and Mariyama notice Yahagi and ask, how is he doing? With him stating that he is fine and he sustained no injury, Mariyama then remarks that the pot prank was probably directed to Sakurai, 
and asks what was Yahagi's intention for helping her arrange the books, to which Yahagi blushes while responding that he couldn't, but to take a peek at Sakurai phone and notice that it was her birthday, and he wanted to do something to help her, which is why he wanted to sort the books for her, and he is happy that she's safe causing Sakurai to blush. Maruyama then bluntly turned to Yahagi and asked him if he likes Sachiko making them both feel awkward, and on the other side, Aida Sensei is as usual listening to them with a menacing expression as he contemplate what to do next. A flashback shows a landlord knocking down heavily at Aida's house stating that the rent was not paid, and that if they continue to do so, then they would be in big trouble, all while Aida narrates that he was used to the quiet life back then, as we see his young version sitting silently in a roughed up room, fixated on playing video games with a figure beside him. He further exclaimed that his mother was a good woman and was the person he loved most, but is somehow is still able to remember her last words being that he should become a good man to protect other. And the figure turns out to be his dead mother's corpse hanging from the ceiling with a scary expression on her face and blood dripping down her body that for some reason doesn't even phase the young Ada. The landlord keeps on knocking the door, not knowing what's inside the apartment asking for the mother to pay the bills or get out, and that if she has a problem, she should take it out on her runaway husband, further giving us more insight onto the young child upbringing and how not being able to protect his mother caused him to realize his purpose, which was that he would become a hero. Many years later, Ada Rintaru became the homeroom teacher to protect students from things like bullying, sexual harassment and anything else, but soon realized that the school was way too peaceful and he got tired when there was no reason for him to be a hero. But soon after, and when it was time for the home visit period where teachers visit their students' homes, that's where Ada first laid his eyes on Sakurai and noticed the state she was living in and saw his older self in her as she lived in a rundown house. And we finally saw his version of the events and that he was crying not because he felt pity for her, but because he finally found someone that can give his life a meaning. He stated crying with a creepy smile on his face. And from that moment on, he had been eerily staying closer to Sakurai without her notice, spending most his time naked in her room while she falls in deep sleep. The morning after the plant pot prank took place, Yahagi wakes up to get ready for school and goes through his messages, noticing a new text from a person nicknamed Hero. And upon opening the text, he is horrified to read that whoever this hero is, is threatening him to stay away from Sakurai Sachiko or else. Sometime later that day, Sakurai finished sorting some books out and turned to Yahagai to find him lost in his thoughts, as he is looking back onto the text not knowing what to do and how to act, until she suddenly calls out his name and show her gratitude again for what he did to her yesterday and how she feels sorry about what happened to him thanks to her. Her face expression brings back Yahagi as he finds her extremely beautiful and realizes that he needs to protect her from whoever is stalking her and that he will serve as her shield and start helping her sort other books to avoid getting into another prank. When Sakurai sit back up, she noticed that he got an email just as he finishes her supposed task and she apologizes again feeling bad for him, but Yahagi reiterates that he is doing it simply because it's his responsibility as a man causing an awkward moment between the two. Sakurai then points out that he got an email and he asks her to help him clear off some mud on the rest of the book while he goes through it and begins having some sort of feelings towards Sakurai and wondering if this is love. But, and as Yahagi is in his own world, he opens the email only to be met with a videotape of him showering and a message reminding him that he was warned to stay away from Sakurai. Suddenly, Yahagi entire world crash on him as he desperately tries to be cool and delete the message. His mind going blank as he stares at the screen for a moment, and when Sakurai asks him and suggests using chlorine to clear the books, he simply and with a cold voice tell her that he is focused on his task and that she need to stop talking to him, creating a rift between the two as Sakurai can only apologize and keep her distance all while Yahagi thinks about the tape and what will happen to him. Meanwhile outside, Aida is washing the flowers listening to their conversation as his students all surround him and explain that flowers need to have just enough of caring to bloom and that the pest control is done. Days later, in the staff room, Ada remembers that he almost forgot his SD card plugged in 
which could result in him not having any footage and places it in his pen, which is secretly a spy camera. Ada's spy pen has 32 gigabytes of storage, and when he connects it to his external HDD and laptop, he gets to have one terabyte of footage of his student Sakurai. And he gets so much excited that he accidentally agrees to be on the week's night patrol duty with Shiner the nurse. Later, Ushijima Sensei tees him about being alone with the nurse all night, just as the latter's come excited to be with, and tees him as well, even calling Loveland like his students. Sheena then asks him to write down their names and the dates as record, and Ada realized that the shift starts as of this moment, just as he write down his name, and that he won't be able to go to his student's house and get her birthday surprise ready. To make matters worse, he will have to spend the patrol shift with Shina, whom he sees her as a disgusting piece of smoking junk food. Later that day, Sheena goes back to the infirmary where her office is, excited that she will spend the night alone with Ada and start touching herself, stating that she wants him to hold her before she turn her attention to the form where they wrote their names and realize that Ada has forgot to take the record with him. And not only that, he has also left behind his pen, remarking that the pen is a little bit too big for its size. <laughs> 